Sorry, it's my personal massager. And why do I think that's used elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> actually brilliant oh <laughs> hey welcome back to our stupid reactions unit it's up corbin i'm rick and he calls on instagram, instagram twitter juicy 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 so juicy ring it rick you're juicy juicy good job and today we're reacting to a interview this is called artists ask on your Casio. cool uh, our dust, uh, yeah, on your Casio. Um, basically, anybody we've ever interviewed is now our dust. It's not dust. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Pankaj, <laughs> our dust Pankaj. <laughs> Ooh, I got the book you recommended, sir. How is it? So far, so good. Very interesting and really great. In the beginning point of the of the at the outset, talking about bringing a broader mindset within the contemporization of acting after Stanislavski in the Western, without mm -hmm. losing sight of some of the things that were taught through classical Indian acting. Mm. So far, I'm really, it seems to be exactly what I was anticipating. So this is a video of Anya Kashyap answers questions from his friends and collaborators, and he can't say no to any question. Okay, so he has to, he has to answer whatever. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, we love Anya Kashyap. Some people think we love him too much, and to that I say, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I am an Anurag Kashyap and you are watching I love your glasses. News on yeah, Artist great. Ask. Film Companion has got my friends and collaborators to send in questions and uh, I have to answer these questions. I can't escape them. First question is from Amit Trivedi. Only mm -hmm. Amit Trivedi can come answer the question like this. Will we ever get to see you direct an out and out commercial masala film or an epic large scale film like Bahubali? I think Amit, epic large scale I tried with Bombay, but it was quite an epic. It, was a, it had a large scale impact on my life. Bombay, Baba? I don't know. I think every film I make is a kind of a commercial masala film. I never saw myself as any other filmmaker but a masala filmmaker. But I think the definition of masala is very different from in our country. So we, we call chatpata films masala films. Mm -hmm. So I hopefully, hopefully on a box office, I will have a commercial masala film kind of success one day. Kanika <laughs> Dillon, how many pairs of shoes do you own? You are a compulsive shoe shopper and buy the most jazzy looking shoes. When you buy these shoes, do you go for comfort of the soul or jazzy look? It's like my stepdad. He owns more shoes than my mom. Really? Kanika Dillon is asking me this question. Uh, I don't know how many pairs of shoes I have. I think more than 200. Yeah, I think my dad has, a, my stepdad has and around 200, I 100. go for the comfort and be look, kidding. yes, I'm a compulsive shopper. I, I just, when I'm doing nothing, it's actually, <laughs> it's how everybody says that I should be kept busy. Otherwise I do, I have I four shoes. pairs of shoes. So if I'm not writing or not working on my shoes. What the heck? 200 pairs of shoes? shoes are it's like a Mel Marcos. I'm, I'm very proud of shoes and I wear, I choose every day. People shoes love shoes. Day. And... You have to cross shoes to get to my bed. There's no space for shoes, so half the reason to move to the new house is so that more room for my shoes. Organize it in a way. My stars. There's a whole room that will have the walk-in wardrobe of shoes that you need. <laughs> I love it's awkward. I love it. Will you ever write and direct a film that will get a U certificate? If I'm not wrong, every single one of your films have got a got an A or U S certificate. I asked because I'm trying, but in September I couldn't manage it. I got an A for it. Can you achieve it and then give me tips? I don't think so. One anime, the children film I made called Hanuman Returns also got UA. So I don't think I can ever get the U set to make it. But so like a rating I want to learn. I guess so, yeah. One film, no, every film was a UA. I don't think I can get a U certificate. Yeah, it's a certification from the board, the master. censorship. Yeah, some piece of shit. Right? Mm -hmm. Your films have such distinctive soundtracks. Even the love song sounds so different. Is that just something to really or do you give very <laughs> Apart from explaining the situation. 
But Lord, uh, I actually give a lot of time. So I work with Amit Trivedi every three years, four years, because that's how much it takes for me to work on the music for him. And I think he cares about so it as much as Scorsese cares about music. Him to start listening to jazz because one day we do Bombay Velvet. Yeah. And Amit started working work on Bombay Velvet five years before it actually came out. Sneha worked on Varshapur for three years. And I generally find people who are new and available and can give all their time to me because that's how long I take to work on music. But me and Amit have already been working on the music of another film for one and a half years now. And with the three different set of music directors and any I can't wait for that. For three different films. The um, so Sneha is already luxury of making film, film versus TV. Amit is already working on another film and Rachita and Karsh Kale are working <clears> on a third film. And one of the music will be done as I did. I love when he nerds out on Me too. Uh, making film. Me too. Radhika Apte. Why don't you see the engage in a number of stimuli at a time? Whether it's playing a game, puzzles on the iPhone, iPad, or doing multiple projects while directing one. You seem to be multitasking and in some way, hmm. I see it as a part of your work as well. Not a lot of your work seems arm or simple. How does the choice of being occupied in multiple things simultaneously contribute to your work process? I know I thrive in chaos. I have always thrived in chaos. I remember shooting for Bombay Velvet once and everything was so organized. And I was so lost. Driving crazy. It was a set. And I did not know how to function. And I remember the very first day in my 80s, everybody, the call sheets and people, was, everything was in place and I did not know how to shoot. Hmm. So I just got up and I went and gave different instructions to every single junior. <laughs> I went to Rajiv and said, let's shoot on there, be chaos. <laughs> chaos. And we started shooting. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, on the call sheet? Doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> like I said to Kanika, if I'm not busy working, I'll buy shoes. So it's always good to keep your mind engaged. And it was <coughs> awesome. That's how I was trained with Ramu, with the lack of budgets over the years. Mm, yeah. And That'll force you to work in chaos. And get shots and get the film made which no one wanted to make. So over the years that has become my process of working. I can not function any other way. The only, the only thing that I don't know or don't understand, like music, I depend on people and I give them a lot of time. But other than that, I remember Man Marziya, we finished shooting in Sacred Games and I went to shoot Man Marziya. And two days before the shoot, I called Tapsi, I said, listen, can you get your hair red? She says, Abhi yaad aare. And Abhi to busa on film mein. Then I called Vicky and I said, this is, I'm sending a reference hairstyle and this is the hairstyle you need to get. And Vicky, because he has worked with me as an assistant, so he doesn't get surprised. And then I called Kanika and Tapsi had never worked with me and Tapsi said, listen, I know you're going to improvise, but can I get a rough idea of what this script is going to look like? I said, okay, we'll postpone the shoot by a day. And me and Kanika sat down two days, two nights in the room and finished the script. I said, this is the script. Can we start shooting tomorrow now, please? I don't know any other group. If there's one thing you could change about Gangster Vasipur, what would that be? And same for Bombay Velvet. One thing that I could change for Gangster Vasipur would be the climax, visual effects. Which I still cringe when I watch it because when the film went to Khan, it seemed like it was half done. And I still had hope because the film was not releasing and we could correct that. But we just got conned by this visual effects artist who delivered it two days before the release. And every time I see that sequence when Rama Gilchi gets shot and the blood flows out like it's somebody's opened a tap, it's just so badly done. Mm -hmm. And I cringe. That's one thing that I would definitely want to change. So one day maybe I'll get to do it. For Bombay Velvet, I would what I would like to do is just go back to my original cut and I still have all the files of Bombay Velvet and I hope one day I'll have enough money to get that There's out. There's a lot of drama with Bombay Velvet. Mm. That's something that I would like to do. Do it, man. Yeah. Manoj Bajpay. What irks you so much about Mumbai that you choose to check into hotels abroad? Are you running away from something? You can write in a sultry environment even again. I, I like traveling. I like being up in the air. I like Me I like too. long haul flights. Me too. I like a lot there. I like solitary spaces. And abroad, 
the advantage is that I can just while writing I can just go out for a stroll mm-hmm. without an actor walking up to you and saying sir I want the role <laughs> or somebody trying to solicit a script or something mm-hmm. else which I can't. You're do. known in India. Yeah. No. Because you can be anonymous the, here. The picture that's out there is that I'm the only one who works with outsiders. So all outsiders come and they they just completely. Yeah, he could literally sit in a Starbucks here, and I think very and few people that I know would good people rep anyone. Yeah, they're Indian. Yeah, I found, yeah. I found lots of people. Also, like if you're that. in LA, no one really can. But they're also doing exactly. Things. And it was you could have Oprah. Oh, you could have Oprah sitting in a Starbucks and be like, "Hey, that's Oprah over there." Exactly. And everybody thinks and says, "I'm also dark skin like Noah's. Give me a chance." I'm dark skin like Noah's. I've been around having trade, so. That's great. Well, I'm not doing anything else rather than that. Yagrajan Kumara, which is your most favorite genre in cinema, which is the genre that you made. Why? To make or watch? Really difficult question. I don't have a favorite. I like, I like crime movies. Surprise. But I don't like gangster movies so much. Hmm. I do not like slapstick comedy. I do not like slapstick comedy. I I like comedy. I like comedy, social comedy. I like comedy with purpose. I like dark humor. Yeah, I know people who I hate like the Three Stooges. Humor. Just yeah. random slapstick. I don't know. Yeah, me too. I don't under, I don't understand it. And then it's those Charlie Chaplin ones. Or don't don't, don't like Charlie like Chaplin. Chaplin. Black and white silent movies. Wow. Mm, he might be talking about like the Parivarik melodrama that we are making. Family films, the so-called oh, the, family. The melodramas. Films, the mm-hmm. I agree. Family viewing mm-hmm. experience. I never have subscribed to that. I think movie watching or anything is a kind of an individual experience. There's some movies, some genre work because it's a collective viewing experience, like horror. Like some films work when you watch it with people. Like a movie like Three works when you watch it with people. And the Marvel some films. movies that are totally individual experiences, and I subscribe more to the individual experience mm. because they stay with me. Films that make me think about some things, films that stay with me the day after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Films that shape me. Those are films that I like. Asma, like, yeah, Olin Kali Sharan. That time I also still retain the same tagline. This winter, think neon. I think Asma, neon is older now. It would have been fun then. To do it in 2000, but I know I am in Kalisan. I'm rewriting the script, and hopefully we'll make it with our favorite actor, favorite star, one day. So be that. Are you a forgiving person? If yes, does it come from the past where you had hope to be forgiven, and now you want to break that cycle? Yeah, I have. I do forgive, and sometimes I don't. But I like it to be natural. I like things to flow because once forgiven, it's totally forgiven for me. I never hold grudges. I don't believe in holding grudges, and I do have issues. I get very angry about things. I have issues mostly with authority, and I feel that when authority does not handle power with responsibility, then it suddenly gets me angry. Mm-hmm. See, I always have problems with government, with the censor board, with people who hold official positions, people who are supposed to do a job which they have been chosen for, like publicly elected positions. Yes. So I hope, I hope one day I become totally free. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> you could make only one more film. What should we do? But only one more. And I would want to make a film. I want to. I would rather make a film that, like a love dance film, that is endless, and I would, I would rather keep shooting the film, like Orson Welles, for the rest of my life, <laughs> and enjoy the process more than anything. Like Orson Welles, yeah, and keep shooting and ending, and if people like seeing they can keep releasing. The <laughs> yeah, like Orson Welles. I don't want to make only one more film. <laughs> we don't want you to make just one more film either. I know that these people really know me well, and I don't think anyone sent in a question which I would not have expected from them. And I was 
surprised by Bharadwaj Rangan and Nilap also being sending in a question each. From the other people's question, I know that they have, there's also between the lines that I could read in the questions. <laughs> if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Company. I, I've noticed Film Companion often has those people. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> At the end of the interviews, if you like this video, please, please subscribe, subscribe for more juicy content. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that was great. I love yeah, him. He's I do too. So, well, obviously, you know, we guys, if you're here and you know us, you know we love him very much uh, because he's talented. Yeah. And there's no denying that, regardless of your personal views of him. No. You can't deny that the man is extremely exactly. talented. You, you got to be able to separate that and recognize because there's no perfect human <clears throat> being. And there's a lot of artists of all ilks that I personally can detest them personally. Mm. I can detest their politics. I can detest their be beliefs, their morality, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But I, you can't deny the fact that they are good at what they do. Yeah. You know? Uh, and and I, I just... I the, the thing I like about him the most aside from his love of the art form and his yeah. capacity in the art form, is that he's pretty much just what you see is what you get. There's no contrivances. He is not trying to prove himself to anybody. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's honest. Like, I loved his answer about forgiveness. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm forgiving and I'm not forgiving. He had no problem just saying that. Like, yeah, there's times, there's times I'm not forgiving. Uh, and I know I probably should be more forgiving. So, yeah, he's just he's I great. totally agree with his answer and I'm the exact same way. But yeah. I also... I don't want to be totally forgiven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's certain things that I will never forgive people for. Not yeah. personal people, but like he was talking about, people of authority. Yeah, there's especially especially authority. That's abuse. Government authority. Uh, authority figures that are put there in place mm -hmm. by people to serve people who then abuse that authority. Yeah, absolutely. That's by far the thing the most infuriating for me. Absolutely. Yeah. That was great, though. Uh, we need to watch another On Your Akashio film because I want to. Uh, <laughs> Gulal. I want to watch them all. I'm very interested in Bombay Velvet now. The more I hear I about it, the, like, the fact that... Well, we saw the song. There was so much drama behind it. A lot of people said it wasn't great. He apparently has his own cut that he wants to do. Like, it makes me very interested. And then there's that other one with, um, I believe it's Topsy and um, uh, Vicky. And Vicky Vicky had the, yeah, I remember with the weird, the great haircut. We did a reaction to one of those songs um, from that. But now obviously he has a ton, but yeah, we, we, I want to get back into it because I, I, I just love him so much. I would love, if you ever want to release, sir, anything like Orson, well, Ar Orson Welles's, <coughs> I won't watch, there's a finished version mm -hmm. of his final film, mm -hmm. uh, The Sound of the Wind. I guess, is that what it said? It was what it's called? The, <clears throat> the Sound of the Wind, the Noise of the Wind. Anyway, somebody tried to lovingly create a final version. Uh, I, I don't like that. I'm, I'm reading a book about Orson Welles and Orson himself preferred process, not destination. Yeah. And didn't understand why the industry didn't appreciate that as much. Mm -hmm. And I would love anything that he was creating that wasn't a finished project that he just wanted to release and say, this is what I've made so far. And then watch it and then three years later, I've added some stuff to it. This is what it's like so far. That would be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Well, let us know which uh, next film of his we should watch. Another film, uh, interviews uh, from other people or him that we should watch down below. <laughs>